Brachio, a delicious bulb with a crisp bite. Flavor reminiscent of garlic, leeks, and onion notes that complements many Japanese dishes. Also referred to as gukyu or Chinese onions. Easily cultivated, they could be harvested twice a year depending on your climate. They're commonly served in a vinegar-based pickle called amazuzuke. Follow my guide and you too can become an umami garden master. Prepare a dedicated garden space or plant bed by reseeding with nutrients. Mycorrhiza is a highly beneficial fungus that has many benefits and should always be considered when gardening. You can also find these buried deep in your soil, white and sometimes yellow. Azospirulum brazilens, also known as azos, is a beneficial bacteria that helps plants convert nitrogen into plant food. They work in conjunction with mycorrhiza and should always be applied simultaneously for best results. Azomite, A to Z natural minerals. Many minerals are lost during the growing season. Adding azomite replenishes the missing nutrients with added benefits. Add compost, clean food scraps, and garden trimmings without any weeds. This provides food to the microbes, worms, and returns any nutrients displaced. Use dried or fresh trimmings. Moist matter will contain mold that will contaminate your soil. Add coconut coir for moisture retention and pH balance to prevent mold. Add a few handfuls of compost from your worm bin with worms and eggs to populate the garden bed. Distribute components evenly for everything to mature naturally. By providing food to microorganisms and worms, they'll proliferate to provide many benefits to our plant bed. Garlic and onion scraps repel pests and many rodents. This barrier continues to deter them even after it's broken down by nature. Complete this process before the soil dries up to avoid further decline in microbial life. Evenly distribute the soil amendments. This allows an accelerated growth and uniform maturity throughout the garden space. Break down cardboard or recyclable paper with little to no ink as growing surface for microbes and food for the worms. Check progress for any poorly placed materials and nutrients. Apply compost or potting soil to top off the reseeded layer, allowing it to develop. Refrain from using non-organic enhancements or fertilizers. Organic fertilizers can be introduced once plants develop a root system. Adding prematurely has no benefits. Inspect for signs of mold or weeds that can manifest the planting space. Dark, rich soil is a strong indicator of health and wealth. You can basically throw any seeds in it and they'll germinate. Saturate the plant bed with filtered water. Check the water parameters for levels of copper, chlorine, fluoride, and TDS. Deeply water the plant bed to ensure saturation and no air pockets. Let the plant bed rest overnight. This allows time for reseeding to be successful. Use cured bulbs for accelerated growth. Replanting a live plant will leave it in shock and require several days to weeks to acclimate before it starts growing again. A cured bulb will regrow as soon as it touches soil. The condition of these bulbs in a growing stage, they will extend roots a day after planting. A few things to consider when selecting a great bulb candidate. They should be firm with a thick outer layer, green and white, signifying it's actively growing, cured for at least two to three weeks to rid any pest, disease, or rot. Plant bulbs partially submerged in soil exposing their buds. A bulb buried too deep will suffocate and rot. Planting in groups of two or three is recommended. Any more you'll risk impacted growth due to overcrowding. They tend to grow smaller when space is limited. With sufficient space, they'll grow into much larger, crispier, and flavorful bulbs. Spacing should be 4 to 5 inches apart, or one finger length, to prevent overcrowding which will lead to impacted growth. Do not worry about the dried roots or dirt. It will not have any ill effects on the bulb growth. Consider it as a layer of protection during the development stage. 
Plant bulbs early in the morning, this allows them time to acclimate. Evenings should be avoided since they're dormant around those hours. Also, nuisance pests and mold risk are significantly increased. Larger clusters should be planted deeper to provide them the much needed spacing. Avoid covering the insertion opening. This encourages a deeper saturation. It will close naturally. These plants require full sun for at least 8 hours a day to reach its potential. Saturate with filtered water simply by using a carbon filter block attachment to your garden hose. It will absorb any harmful content, making the water safe enough for you to drink. Expect to see signs of life in a week after planting. After a month of planting, the bulbs become larger due to a more developed root system. At 3 months, edible bulbs will develop. Allow it another month to fully separate before harvesting. Depending on your climate, you can harvest twice annually for a plentiful bounty. The entire plant is edible. Use the leaves for a simple pesto, stir fry the scapes in a garlic and olive oil saute, topped with a few bulbs. Propagation of plants involve bulb division or seed germination. After years of cultivation, it's still rare to discover any viable seeds from fully open pollinated plants. Allow flowers to fully senesce before collecting the viable seeds. They'll resemble an onion seed, but smaller. Seeds are located inside the ovule, they'll easily dislodge with a gentle shake. Bulbs can be harvested in spring and early fall to enjoy them year round. Bulb division occurs if they're not harvested frequently. This leads to overcrowding and smaller bulbs. Routinely check plants to ensure their health, especially during rain. They tend to attract unwanted fungal infections and mold. Purge any unhealthy flowers and wilted leaves to encourage bulb development. Allow flowers to fully bloom. This provides food for pollinators. Blooms are edible and filled with minerals such as potassium and zinc, vitamins E and C as well. As an added benefit, use as flower arrangements to repel any pests. Compost in the worm bin once they expire. Saturate plants bi-weekly, daily during warm and dry weather. Fertilize plants in an organic fertilizer or mineralized water. They'll thrive in any compost or anything organic. 
Chemically enhanced fertilizers are toxic and will ruin the taste. When using worm tea, cover foliage and the entire plant bed. This protects the plants from unwanted pests. Additionally, it will act as a foliar application and directly feeding the root zone. Although these plants are drought resistant, they'll go into the dormancy stage and engage in the curing process if the environment is too dry. Saturate plants during morning when they're most active. Avoid evenings as it will cause fungal infections and mold issues. Overwatering is strongly encouraged. Worm tea is completely neutral and will not over fertilize any plants. Prune plants weekly to ensure their health. Remove any dead or decaying foliage to prevent disease. They're especially vulnerable during winter due to high levels of humidity. Prune by gently peeling and pulling foliage. Weak plants will give in with low effort. Healthy foliage will create some resistance. Bury in plant bed to allow natural decomposition or feed the worm bin. Fall pruning requires more attention due to high humidity and rainfall. These plants do enjoy lots of moisture, but excessive moisture will create unhealthy conditions. During summer, they're carefree and require minimal attention. Companion plants should be considered when planting raccio, such as other bulbs, corms, roots, or tubers. It provides supplemental nutrients, protection from the elements such as dry winds and intense sun exposure. They'll act as a barrier or decoy plants to pests. They'll attract many beneficial insects and most importantly, they won't be lonely. Many insects such as bees, ladybugs, and checkered skippers, which are related to butterflies, are attracted to these adorned flowers. They pose no threat to your garden. They're considered as beneficial pollinators. Skippers can be spotted during the morning to afternoon when they feed. They become elusive during nightfall. The fiery skipper can also be spotted during these hours. They'll feed on the plant nectar until nightfall. Ladybug sightings are always a positive sign. They'll keep pesky aphid invasions under control. Before harvesting blooms for consumption, allow 2-3 to three days for them to fully bloom and feed the pollinators before collecting. Sometimes if you're lucky, they'll leave behind seeds for you to spread their legacy. Scapes will emerge in fall. Thin them out to encourage bulb growth. Harvest gates late afternoon after the pollinators have had the lion's share of nectar. Harvesting prematurely deprives pollinators from feeding. Among all beneficial pollinators, honeybees are most attracted to these flowers. These blooms also draw the attention of hummingbirds.
A mild rinse of cold water in preparation for consumption shall suffice. Skips will continue to emerge until the first frost date. Continue to thin them out to encourage bulb growth. Harvest occurs twice a year, once in spring and another in fall. During fall, the rating one escapes the nest. In spring, the rating one the lower leaves turn brown. Harvest by loosening the soil and gently pulling the entire plant. A beautiful bulb cluster will present itself. When pruning scapes, you'll notice they grow outside the bulb and not inside. These bulbs will harvest in early summer, allowing them another month in ground and bulb division will occur. Harvest remaining bulbs in the summer to cure for replanting in fall. If left unchecked, they'll grow into dense root systems which prevent bulb maturity. By providing these plants the space needed, it will encourage a healthy bulb growth. Expect a mixed bag of bulbs when harvesting in the summer. Sort out large bulbs for consumption and smaller bulbs for replanting. The next step is to prepare these delicious bulbs for consumption. Go with Kitty and explore my channel for a complete guide on how to prepare and enjoy them. Fall activity includes carrot and onion harvest. In addition to garlic planting, engage in tandem gardening to ensure that you have a bounty to enjoy every season. Explore my channel for an upcoming video about Japanese garlic. Here's a preview of what to expect. Japanese solo garlic, grown from a single clove. Many describe this as an anomaly, but in my experience, this can easily be accomplished. Japanese hardneck garlic is the best variety for aging black garlic due to its compact shape, large bulbs, and extraordinary flavor profile. Like, share, and subscribe if you found value in any of my videos. Kitty and I appreciate your support.